Welcome to the Complete Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course by Andrew Womack and Don Crow. Level 1, Lesson 4 Relationship with God by Andrew Womack. One of the most important things about relationship is to understand the person with whom you are going to have relationship, and that also applies to God. You need to understand the basic nature and character of God in order to have a healthy relationship with Him. Misunderstanding His character and nature is one of the reasons many people do not have a positive relationship with Him. This is exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were tempted by the serpent. They entered into temptation, ultimately disobeyed God, and plunged the whole human race into sin. Their lack of understanding God's nature was actually a part of the temptation. The story in Genesis 3 verses 1 to 5 is familiar to most people. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. There is a subtle statement by Satan here that God is really not a good God that he was trying to withhold something from Adam and Eve and that he didn't want them to reach their full potential, that he didn't want them to be like himself and that the reason he made the rule about not eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was to hinder or hurt them. In a sense, Satan came against the very nature and character of God when he maligned him by saying, God did not want the best for them. The same thing is exactly what is happening to people today. Satan tells them, If you follow God and don't experiment with all these things that are contrary to his word, you will never experience true happiness. Life will be boring, dead. The sad fact is that people try various experiences such as drugs, alcohol, sex, rebellion, indulgence of self, success in jobs, and many others, and by the time they realize that they do not give the desired satisfaction, they have already destroyed their lives, their families, and their health. The truth is that God is a good God, and His will for us is only good. But Satan uses the same temptations on us today that came against Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, basically implying that God is not a good God. Those who have only a little understanding of the Bible could get that impression because there are instances in the Word where he treated people in harsh, cruel ways. In Numbers 15, Verses 32 to 36, a man picked up sticks on the Sabbath day and was stoned to death for failing to observe the Sabbath. That sounds harsh, but there was a purpose behind such punishments, though it is not obvious to most people in a casual reading of Scripture. Careful study reveals that Old Testament law was given to make the sin that we've committed become exceedingly sinful, as Paul says in Romans 7 verse 13. The purpose was that people didn't realize how deadly their transgressions were 
and that they were an offense against God. They made the mistake of comparing among themselves and measuring their actions by what other people were doing. If someone committed a sin and wasn't struck dead, they thought sin must not be so bad, and they lowered their standards. They had lost the true perspective on what was right and wrong. God had to bring back mankind to a plumb line, a proper standard of what right living was, so they would reject the devil and his temptations and recognize what the end result of wrong choices would be. Then, when he did that, he had to enforce the law he gave. God did not give the Old Testament commandments for the purpose of saying, until you do all these things, I can't accept you or love you. That is not his nature or character. Rather, he gave them to make our sense of right and wrong more acute and to bring us back to the fact that we need a savior. The problem has been that people thought God was demanding perfection before he could love them, which led to the attitude many have that his love for them is directly proportional to their performance. They feel that until they try to do everything exactly right, they will not be accepted by God, and that is not the message of the Bible. God's heart is to reconcile mankind to himself, not to judge them, not to impute their sins, not to hold their sins against them. That is the heart of God for people in the Bible and also his heart for you today. You need to understand his real heart, that God is love, 1 John 4 verse 8. He seeks to take away your sins and anything that would separate you from him. He has already done it through Jesus, and he is offering you relationship today, not based on your performance, but on your faith and acceptance of Jesus bearing your sins. You can have relationship with God today, regardless of the failures in your life. All he asks is that you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us now take this opportunity to pause and reflect on the lesson by considering some questions. Suggested scripture readings will first be read, followed by the question to be answered. A pause is then recommended to allow time to meditate on the scripture as an individual or to discuss as a group and formulate an answer. Finally, the suggested answer will be given. We read Genesis 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Question. What question did Satan ask Eve? Answer. Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? We read Genesis 2.17 and Genesis 3 verse 3. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Question. What word or words did Eve add to what God actually said to Adam? Answer. That they shouldn't touch it. We read Genesis 3 
verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Question. Once Satan was able to instill doubt into Eve's mind regarding the word of God, what did she do in this verse? Answer. Took and ate of the tree. We read Genesis 3 verses 9 to 10. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Question. After Adam and Eve sinned, did God still communicate and pursue a relationship with them? Answer. Yes. We read Genesis 3, verses 22 to 24. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever, therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim, at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the Tree of Life. Question. Why did God drive Adam and Eve from the Garden? Answer. So they would not eat from the Tree of Life and live forever in a sinful state. Question. Can you see that this was an act of mercy by God rather than a punishment? Answer. Yes. We read Romans 5.17. For if by the one man's offence death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Question. How do we attain God's abundance of grace and gift of righteousness? Do we A. Buy it, B. Earn it, or C. Receive it? Answer. C. Receive it. We read Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Question. What do we really deserve if we sin? Answer. Death. Question. By grace, what does God give us instead? Answer eternal life in Christ Jesus. We read Romans 10 verse 3. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Question. If we try to establish our own righteousness before God, what do we fail to do? Answer. Submit to Jesus as our righteousness. We read 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We read Romans 4 verse 3. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Question. 
What does God promise to do with all our sins and iniquities against him if we would only believe? Answer. Remove them, forget them, and forgive them. Question. What does this tell you about the character of God? Answer. That he is merciful and loving. Thank you for joining me and taking part in our lesson. This lesson is one of many steps on a learning pathway, taking you deeper into discipleship and relationship with the Lord. And now, stay tuned for our next lesson.